Hi, this is Michael Kohler with Coral Castle Explained coming to you with another video. In my last video, I told you that I was going to discuss the concepts of torsion fields, Ed's throne room, the concept of precession, and 2012. As you may know, one of the most talked about dates in the last couple of decades is the date December 21st, 2012. This date, recently popularized by the movie 2012, discusses the possibility that severe Earth changes linked to the Sun in an alignment with the center of our galaxy may cause calamities that have not been seen for thousands of years. Whether these changes will occur or not remains to be seen. However, what is important is understanding that the Mayans were not focused on calamity. They were focused upon the cycles that repeated themselves again and again like clockwork through the ages. An example of this is the concept of precession. Precession is a change in the orientation of the rotation axis of a rotating body. In astronomy, precession refers to any of several slow changes in an astronomical body's rotation or orbital parameters. For instance, the Earth goes through a precessional cycle every 26,000 years. It is almost like a wobble in the planet itself, as represented with this gyroscope that you can see. Currently, the Earth's north axial pole points almost directly at the star Polaris. This wobble, which is caused by the gravitational tidal forces of the Moon and Sun as they pull on the equatorial bulge of the Earth, is the primary cause of this wobble. In an area of physics developed by the Soviets in the 1980s, the concept of torsion fields came about. The word torsion refers to any variable that describes rotation. Therefore, as the Earth, Moon, and the planets rotate around the Sun, they are creating fields of energy which affect us here on Earth in a similar but more subtle way than the gravitational tidal forces that I just mentioned. At Ed's Coral Castle, Ed created what he calls the throne room. In this room, he has a throne for himself, his sweet 16, and the child. There are several other chairs, including what is called the Mad Rocker, and the mother-in-law chair, purportedly the most uncomfortable chair in the castle. Behind the throne room, on the walls, are celestial objects including the planet Mars, the planet Saturn, the Moon in crescent format, which he called the Crescent of the East, and the smaller crescent shape, which can be seen to the right of the Moon, which is the planet Venus. It is my opinion that Ed placed these celestial objects on the wall to represent another clue to the mystery of how he moved the enormous coral blocks that have mystified people for decades. I believe the reason he placed them there is that the positioning of these objects in the night sky played a large role in how Ed was able to do the miraculous. Here's an example of why. As I stated before, the gravitational tidal forces caused by the positioning of the Earth, Moon, and Sun are evidenced by the high and low tides that we see every year, with the Moon being the Earth's primary tidal generating force. However, when the Sun, Moon, and Earth are aligned in a straight line, which is called syzygy, the tidal forces are enormous because of the combination of both the pull of the Sun and the Moon upon the Earth in nearly a straight line. The reason that Ed's Coral Castle and the infamous date of December 21st, 2012 share a connection is that Ed understood that cycles were very important including the effect that the Sun, Moon, and the planets had upon the Earth. He knew that cycles repeated themselves at specific times during each year, and that at specific times, certain windows of opportunity would reoccur. Whether or not the end of the world will occur in 2012 remains to be seen, but what we do have as tangible evidence that cycles do repeat themselves are the miraculous things that have occurred as evidenced by the Coral Castle itself. 
It is my opinion that at certain times of the year, based upon the speed of the Earth around the Sun, and based upon the positioning of the Moon, Venus, and the other planets in the night sky, that Ed was able to enter windows of opportunity that allowed him to maneuver the large coral blocks. Because during these windows, physics, as we know it, was slightly altered. In the next video, I will discuss three very important things. It is not enough that windows of opportunity were open to do the miraculous. If that were true, everyone might accidentally move a five-ton stone or two at certain times of the year. The reason Ed was able to do this was that he was able to harness and channel his intent through his body during these windows of opportunity by accessing and working with the energy of the earth. The next video will discuss the concepts of intention, resonant frequencies, and how Ed was able to move the stones using a concept called phase transition.